Um, and so today I want to talk to you about reading the Bible deep. So reading deep, we, we've looked at the big story of the Bible. We've looked at uh, reading daily. So getting through, just keep moving through the story. Now I want to look at what happens when you're cruising through the forest and all of a sudden there's this tree and you're like, ah, there's something about that tree. I have got to figure out what's going on with this tree. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you, if you have your notebooks, take them out. I'm going to give you some tips. So when, when we talk about the Bible, I want to give you a phrase that should help you when you're trying to dig into study anything in the Bible. So this is good for anything. And it's the phrase, context is king. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Context is king. Like you could say context is queen if you want to as well, right? So it's the ruler. It's for all you Bible queens out here, right? Like context is the, the most important, the ruler. So when we're talking about reading the Bible deep, context is where we start. Where, how do we understand what's going on in this section of scripture? We're always going to be looking at the context. And there's, there's two types of context that you can look at. There's the historical context and the logical context in a book. So the, let's start with the historical context. What does that mean? Well, the historical context is all of the stuff that's happening around the story of the Bible. So it's not what's necessarily in there, but it's things like the, the history, the culture, uh, oh, everything that happens that helps inform what's going on in the Bible because the Bible was written by real people who are part of a real life using real language. That's what's happening in the scripture is it's stories about real things stories about real history. And so it represents whatever was going around in that time and point in history. And so in order to get to the historical context, you can't just read your Bible more to figure out what's going on in the historical context. And remember, this isn't to know the main message of the Bible. That's really clear. Everybody should know Jesus is the main message of the Bible. But sometimes there's these things referenced and you're like, well, what, what does that mean? That's a little confusing. I'd like to understand that. And so sometimes we need a better historical context to give us a, a, a better grasp on what are the points that are being made here? What are some of these finer points, these distinctions, and how can that help me? So there's a few tools that can help you dig into this historical context. One of them is a Bible handbook. I love Bible handbooks because if you're reading through the whole Bible, you know, you're going to be coming up to 60 different books, right? As you go through. And what a good Bible handbook does is it divides, the, the, the book is divided in the same way scripture is, and it has a general introduction to every book in the Bible. And it helps you see, okay, what's the context? What's going on in history? How does this relate to the story overall? So a good Bible handbook will be something that can help you. In fact, that every one of you who's won today has gotten a good Bible handbook. It's the, it's the Holman Bible handbook. I love the Holman series. They have really practical resources and it's just short summaries of what's going on, gives you the background, the historical context, the Holman Bible handbook. Holman, Holman. So if you want to know about any of these resources that I'm talking about today, if you scan the QR code on your, on your uh, seat in front of you, there's a link to, to the resources that, that I'm mentioning. So you can write them down, but the, you can also find them uh, online on our Loving the Bible website too. And so there's, and, and then another good place is if you have a Bible commentary in your house, how many of you guys have a commentary on the Bible? Co introductions in Bible commentaries are great places to get a general introduction, right? Like imagine that. The introduction introduces the stuff that's in there. So you don't have to read the whole commentary. You can just flip to that first section and say, oh, I'm going to check out this introduction. Then there's something called Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias. They kind of function in the same way. They're just a little bit longer articles, shorter articles, but they have 
articles on individual words or, or phrases that you find in scripture. So if you find something and you're like, I need to know more about this, you can look in a Bible dictionary or encyclopedia. And then there's something that I, I love this resource because it's, a, it's called a background commentary. So it's a commentary on the Bible. It goes book by book, verse by verse, but it's simply making references on the historical context. So there's, there's lots of great resources out there to help you get more of that historical context, but all of this takes time, right? And this is what you're gonna find. Digging deep takes time. You have to set aside the time to do it. So you can't like come in and say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read something today and I have my 15 minutes set aside. So I'm gonna look at the historical background and then I'm gonna just, no, like this is something that you don't have to do everything, but if this is something you're, I wanna dig deeper, just start, you know, set aside some time. And, and if you're starting a new book of the Bible, man, read, read an introduction about it. Read a Bible handbook article. This is where you start to get a bigger picture of the world that the Bible was written in. And it helps you understand because the Bible was written in our real world. You know how cultures and places and times in history are different? Have you noticed that? Have you met someone from a different culture before? Have you married someone from a different culture? Right, like there, there are differences, even though we know each other really well. We know, oh, there's some different things. We, we speak differently. So this can help unlock some of those finer details in scripture as you're digging deep. And so I really encourage this. This is, the, but this is usually resource heavy. And we'll talk more about this in a second. Now, the second way to dig into context is something that anybody can do if you simply own one of these, right? How many of you guys own a Bible here? That's great. If you don't have one, I will give you one, okay? So if you're in here, you're like, I don't own one. I have one for you. Come find me. You can have one today. We'll fix that problem. That's easy. Problem solved. So now everybody has one of these, and there's some real helpful ways to understand and dig deep into this too. And that's to understand the logical context. So what we, what we did on Friday night, our first session is we did the entire Bible, right? The story of the Bible, it's informed by what the Bible says. And the best way to understand the Bible is to read the Bible, right? It's not to read books that are about the Bible, but it's to read the Bible. If you read the whole story of the Bible, then you will be better informed. You will understand it better. And so that's my encouragement is read the Bible. Just start doing it. If you haven't, just jump in. Take a little chunk at a time. Remember, you're not gonna do it all at once. You can't do it today, right? It's gonna take more than 24 hours to read the whole thing, but you could be done by the end of the year. And so read it, get into it. The next is we're gonna look at a passage of scripture today. I'm gonna to take you through practically a section in Colossians. So we'll, we'll walk through it together. But so if that's what we're looking at, the logical context is gonna be the entire Bible. How does this fit into the whole story of the Bible? The next logical unit is gonna be, since this is in the New Testament, guess what we wanna understand? the message of the New Testament, the new covenant, right? Because he's talking about new covenant communities, new covenant believers. And so that's the next logical context. We're gonna say, oh, we're reading this in light of the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you read something in the Old Testament, you know that Jesus hasn't been revealed. He might be implied, there might be shadows, there might be prophecies, but not revealed at that point in time. So you're gonna have to read it a little different. Then if you get into a, a book in the Bible, another helpful, uh, helpful resource is knowing the author because like we're gonna be looking at Colossians today. Does anybody, who was Colossians written by? The apostle Paul. And he wrote how many letters? 13 of the letters that we have in the New Testament. So if you're reading something that was written by Paul, you know what helps you understand what Paul is communicating? Other things that Paul has said. It's, it's helpful. So if you can look at, if you're familiar with what the author has written in other parts of the Bible, that's really helpful. And then if you're looking at a section of scripture, the next context that's really helpful is the book of the Bible, right? That book, if you know the whole book, what it says, and Colossians will probably take you, probably take you like 15, 20 minutes to read the whole thing, right? It'll take you two minutes to read uh, our section of verses. But you could say, oh, I wanna really wanna look at these verses and understand them. 
If you're gonna start somewhere, just read the book of Colossians, right? Read, read the letter in its entirety. Then if you're looking at you know, a verse, look at the paragraph. Make sure you know how that sentence is functioning in a paragraph so you understand this is the flow of thought and how it works. And then, and do you notice what's happening here, guys? We have this big giant circle of the entire world and all of history and what's happening? We're funneling down, we're spiraling in and we're coming to our target text, right? This very specific thing that we're looking at and you're like, oh, That's the tree, you're right. I had a question about this tree. This is the one. I see the forest it's in. It's full of all these types of trees, but now this is my tree. Let me look at the knots. Let me look at the branches. Look at the scar on this tree. What is going on with this tree? And so that's what we're doing is we're getting a lay of the land so we can hone into how does this function right here. So that's the big picture of context, right? When I talk about context, if you hear Pastor Zach, Pastor Aaron, Pastor West talk about context, the context of this, you know, this is what we're talking about is the larger and larger and larger context. There's always a greater context and that can help us understand the specifics of what we're reading. And so context is queen or queen, whoever the ruler is. And then there's some really practical things that you can do. So reading the Bible in the light of its overall story, the context is there's six things that I think you should always do if you're studying the Bible deep. Number one is pray. If you're coming to the Bible, and let me tell you, I'm gonna show you how to get information out of the Bible. In fact, I could say this is probably one of the, the, the greatest temptations for me is because I know how to get information out of it is to think, I've got this. I'm just gonna go do this. And, and you might be in that place where you're so excited about getting information that you forget. This is a, the word of God. It's a spiritually, divinely inspired text. And if we're to understand it rightly, we need God's help. We need to be aligned with him. We need to be seeing it the way he sees it. And so if you're studying deeply and you don't start with the depth of prayer, if you don't start with those eternal spiritual resources, you're doing it wrong. That's what I wanna say. And it's a temptation for me, I confess, because I know how to get information, but I know the one who the information comes from. And that's where we start. We start with prayer. Now, the next thing that I think is really helpful is read. So if you're praying, then read it. And what you wanna do is, it, so you, most of you probably know this, but the, the New Testament was originally written in Greek and the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. There's a couple of sections in, of Aramaic in it too, which is another uh, Semitic language. But so what we have today is we have these English translations. And so, hey, if you're gonna learn Koine Greek or, or biblical Hebrew, great, you do that. But for the rest of us who like that, you don't even know what that means, we're gonna be reading English translations. And so one of the best ways to try to get to the text underneath the translation for normal humans is to read multiple translations of the Bible because all of these translations are going to the original text And then they're bringing it into our language, which is such a gift. Anybody here bilingual? Yeah, there's a few of us. Can you uh, say something exactly the same using the same words identically in both languages? Is that possible to do? No, you're always making these these calls, right? You're like, okay, like this is the best word in this language I'm trying to translate into. That's the same thing with uh, with the Bible is that you are going to, to be reading a translation and it's accurate, it's good, the message is there. But if you wanna get kind of the heart behind it, read multiple translations. I think that's the best thing you can do as you start studying deeply is just read read multiple translations. I have some recommendations for you. Like, well, what translation should you read? Uh, there are, uh, there's a spectrum of translations. They have different philosophies. And so there's, there's the formal where they're trying to stay as close to the specific words uh, translation. And then there's a, a more dynamic or uh, a word, uh, a phrase by phrase. So word by word, phrase by phrase is sometimes how people um, think of those, the spectrum of translation. And what I think you should do is I think it would be a great thing to pick translations that are on different areas of the spectrum. And so this is what I do. 
I, I use the ESV regularly, so that's always one of the translations that I'm reading passages in. And then, uh, and what you'll notice is the ESV is a little more on the formal side of things. It tries to stick closer to the words as much as possible while making sense. And then I like to get one that's more functional, that has the, the thought processes, the phrase by phrase. So I always have my second Bible is always the New Living Translation. So, and I have one kind of in each side of that family tree. So that way I, I get the best possible chance of, of seeing the nuances from the original text. And then uh, it's great to have one that's kind of in the middle too. So if you got time, do three. Like I'll pick something like the NIV that's more towards the center in between them two, the two translations that I like. Yeah, we have a question. Uh, I just have a question. What's Oh, you know what? You, if you plug those in, you say Bible and plug those in, you can find them online or I will answer it afterwards. Yeah, so, but there's a ton of English translations that you can choose from. And so as you're reading these multiple translations, I think it's just gonna help you because it's written in a language and a culture that we're unfamiliar with. And so you start to get a better picture of what is being communicated. And so as we, as we jump into uh, our, next, our, our next task in studying the Bible deeply is to, you want to, uh, you want to ask questions. And so you're reading through, and this is what should happen, is you should have questions when you read the Bible. If you understand everything that's in the Bible, then please come up here. I'm going to trade places with you, right? Because I read the Bible. And I don't understand everything. I have a lot of questions about stuff. And, and what I've done uh, throughout my life is I, I always have a lot of questions. And so I would start writing my questions in my Bible because if you're, if you're listening to Aaron, which you should, he has some really great things to say. And when he says, don't get stuck, like move on, keep going through. Like I agree with him, but I still have this question. What do I do? I just write my question down. And so after years of doing that in my Bible and then finding answers, I put the answer when I finally found it right next to the question. I'm like, oh man, that question's still there and I have the answer. So now I use post-it notes. I just put post-it notes in my Bible. I write a question next to the verse that I'm like, what is that? And then when I, when I get to it or another time I'm reading through or I study that section and I find my answer, I just pull my post-it note out and I write down the answer because I think there are good answers to our honest questions about the Bible. It's just, we don't know them yet, you know, or maybe you don't know them yet. Somebody else does. So you're going to ask, you're going to observe what's going on. You're going to ask lots of good questions. And then the fourth, the fourth thing that we do is we, we correlate, we compare what scripture says in different places because the best commentary on scripture is the Bible. The Bible's gonna tell you what it means if you keep reading it. Everything is, like all of the main things are so clear and sometimes you don't understand when you're reading one section or you're like, I don't get this, but then you get this in another section. You're like, oh, that illuminates what I was reading here. And, and, and you know, the Bible knows that the Bible's the best commentary on scripture. Jesus, when, when he's, when he's uh, you know, going through his temptation, you know what he's doing? He's quoting the Old Testament. He's like, what's going on here? I'm looking at the Old Testament. He's quoting Deuteronomy. How do you ex understand some of the words Jesus says? You look at where he takes them from originally. Um, the majority of what Jesus says on the cross, so you know he has these phrases and sayings that he says, they come from the Psalms. Jesus was always referencing other parts of scripture as he's, he's living his life. And then last, last night, we talked about how Revelation speaks in the language of the Old Testament. To understand Revelation, you have to know what the Old Testament says. The best commentary on scripture is other scripture. And so you're gonna pray, you're gonna read these multiple translations, you're gonna ask all your questions as you go through, you're gonna compare translations. And do you notice what have you needed to do any of these things? Time and your Bible, right? You don't, you could do all of that with this Bible right here. In fact, um, 
and then you could just look through and, and you don't need anything else. But I do understand there are, there are questions that I have that I can't just read the Bible like harder, like read it harder and find those answers. I have to dig for those somewhere else. And so that's what I want to talk about with you now. And I wanna show you kind of what I do when I'm looking through a passage of scripture. And that's, you dig deep, right? This is the, the task of interpretation. So you have all these questions about the Bible and I'm looking for the interpretation. And the interpretation, I mean, like we probably all have our ideas of what interpretation is. If there's an interpreter, what are they doing? They're communicating the meaning, right? The best interpreters communicate the meaning of the person who's speaking. And that's what real good interpretation is in the Bible. It's we're trying to discover, mine, find out what did God intend to say to us? What was he trying to communicate? And that's all the task of Bible interpretation. Just saying, all right, God, what are you saying here? What are you trying to say to me? And so I want to uh, show you uh, kind of what I do. So I'm gonna pull up, uh, and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you all of these resources that I have. So they're all gonna be online. So you could use any of these things today. If you go to our, our website by going to the QR code, you could find all of these things and use it for yourself. Uh, and I'll walk you through what I do when, when I'm studying a passage of scripture. So what I wanna do first is I'm gonna study the passage of scripture that we're gonna take a look at today is Colossians chapter three, verses five through 11. And so I'm saying, okay, I, I wanna look into this, but uh, like I have, I have some questions. I've kind of read in some different translations, but now I'm going to dig in and try to start finding answers to my questions. So I'm gonna use something like Blue Letter Bible. So this is online resource, blueletterbible.org. And it, it has all sorts of scripture and study resources. So what I'm gonna do is, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my default translation because I love the ESV and they have all the major modern translations here. So I'm gonna go to my gearbox and just change that. And if you have a preferred translation, I think you should do that too. It's a great way to customize this and then use it for the future. And then we're just gonna type in our, our section of scripture, so Colossians, so Colossians 3 verses, oops, what did we say, 5 through 11, right? So if we're following our steps, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pray, right? We're going to say, Lord, help us to receive your word this morning in, in your name, Amen. And I'm serious about this. I, I don't mean like, oh, in the future when you study. I mean, I think God's speaking to us through his word, even though we're learning how to learn about his word. He's speaking. So let's be open to what he's speaking. And so we'd read through this. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. And so as I look through this passage, I'm gonna be asking questions like, okay, like what's going on here? The first thing is I'm observing, right? I'm looking at the things that it says and I'm trying to figure out what it means. And what I would do is I would read the whole chapter, right? We're not gonna do that today, but I would read the whole chapter, see what's going on in this chapter. And we have you know, a logical context, a flow of thought that has brought us to here in this point in the chapter. And Paul is, you know, he's talking about putting on this new self and putting off an old self. And so what do you say? Puts its death, therefore, what is earthly in you? The old things. And so it's like, okay, that's the context. And I wanna remember where it fits in the whole Bible. So what is Colossians saying? What I do is I usually look at a Bible handbook here, here's a, let me show you, oh, 
Here's the, a picture of like the, the handbook that I've, I've been using, the Holman Bible handbook. And it'll tell you everything about this book in a brief synopsis. What's the purpose? First pass, it gives uh, an overview of the structure of the book and you read through that. And I like this because they have pictures, right? And who doesn't like pictures to brighten up your day? And so when you go through that, you're saying, okay, like that's the handbook. It gives me an overview of where we are, the main message. And then I'm gonna read this. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read it in multiple translations. So like, what did I say? NLT. So let's take a look at the NLT. And it says, so put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust and evil desires. Don't be greedy for a greedy person is an idolater. Worshiping the things of this world. And it's like, you know what's interesting? When I read the ESV, there was something in there that seemed a little strange. It had a word passions. Did you guys notice that? And if you just read that, you say, oh man, passions is, are passions bad? Am I supposed to not be passionate about stuff? Should I just be like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about anything. I'm not passionate. Well, what does it say? Put to death, therefore passions. Oh my gosh. Like that could be really convicting. So the first thing I did is looked at another translation. I start to see, oh, wait, it, it's, it was talking about indecent desires, but I wanna know more about this word passions. I'm gonna look into this. And so, you know, that's a question I have. So as I look through that, I'm writing down all of my questions. I'm highlighting. I like to print out the Bible in a sheet of paper and just make all sorts of notes on it so I can figure out like, this is what I'm asking. And I don't ruin the Bible I read all the time. And, and then I'm gonna answer those questions. I'm gonna look at something like passions. And so what I do is, I'll do a study on wor on the words, and so um, there's a the there's tools in Blue Letter Bible that'll help you do that. And if you look at this, it has these uh, this this one called cross references. And so here they're going to have the cross references are keyed to the King James version just because of the tool they have. And then we have my ESV under here, and I see here I have passions. Uh, right before evil desires. And then the King James Version says, inordinate affections right next to evil concupiscence. I don't know what that word is, but okay, inordinate affections. So if I go down here and I look up my phrase from the uh, King James, it has inordinate and it has these verses. So I'm just gonna click on these correlating verses for inordinate and look what it says. Romans 1, 26, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, 5, not in the passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. So when we're looking at this, doing a little bit of study helps give me a little clarity about, okay, that's what that word means. And I just use online resources to look at up stuff. That's, and, and if you don't like the internet, you can buy books. Right, All of these are books that you can buy. You can just get them and, and they're available to you. I just like that the treasury of scripture knowledge, which is keyed to all of these verses, will tell me all the places this topic is quoted, alluded to, and referenced in the whole New Testament. And speaking of topics, right? If you want to look up the topic of uh, you know, these, these uh, affections, I can go and there's, there's this great work. It's the Knaves Topical Bible, which will arrange verses in the whole Bible based on topic. And so I look at affections and I say, wow, look at all this stuff on affections. And it, and it just will show all of the ways this topic is used in the Bible. Affections should be supremely set upon God, should be set upon the commandments of God, upon the house of the worship. These affections, these are where affections are set upon people, upon heavenly things. And then look, should be zealously engaged for God. And you'll notice, look what Colossians 3, 1 and 2, these are the verses in the chapter that we're reading. It, it starts out the flow of this thought with affection should be set upon heavenly things. Our passions should be for the heavenly things and not earthly things. And that's the comparison that's being made. And so when I study the Bible, it's not just for information, but I study for life transformation. I think God wants to transform us and do incredible things in us. And I think these resources will help you. And then once I go through and I look at some of these individual things, that's after I've done 
started answering the questions that I have, that's when I'll do something like start looking at commentaries. So let's go back to our verse. And if we're looking at this tools, right, there's, there's a section called commentaries. And what you notice on Blue Letter Bible is they have these commentaries broken up into audio and video. So there's some video classes and commentaries and teachings. Um, you know, I think that you can go through and see all sorts of people speaking at about, if you talk to my wife, last night she gave a plug for David Guzik and during Word, look at that, that's on Blue Letter Bible. You can look at his notes. There's also, you know, the, these really great commentaries that, that go on different topics go throughout the whole Bible and you can look at various commentaries that are gonna help you figure out what is going on in this section of scripture. But I think you shouldn't go there first. You know, you should, you should take your time, do some deep study, ask your questions, and then try to find answers. Uh, and then once you've done that, look at what other people have said because you'll find that your time is so much more enriched. And so there, there's uh, one more thing that I, I, wanna, I wanna look at. So, um, you know, there's, there's verses that we've been looking at. And uh, if you go down to the bottom of our section, it says, it has this interesting word. It's talking about Scythians, right? So I, barbarian, slaves, free, I can uncircumcise, circumcise. I kind of know what that is. But Scythian, what is a Scythian? Anybody know what a Scythian is? No, so what we could do is we could do something like look this up. And so the best place to look up something like that is with dictionaries or, or Bible encyclopedias. I want a specific word. And here we have this resource, the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. So look at this. It's gonna have a ton of different articles and I'm gonna go down to S and oh, Scythians, look at this. Right? And so if you read through this, you start to see that these Scythians were this intense nomadic tribe who would move around. And it says they had the most filthy habits, never washed in water. They drank the blood of the first enemy killed in battle and made napkins of the scalps and drinking bowls of the skulls of the slain. Uh, so... That's pretty intense, right? Like, do, do you want to be friends with the Scythians? Do you want to invite them over to your, your dinner or like Christmas? Yeah, well, this is, this is what Colossians says. People who come to Jesus, who are part of a new covenant, there's no difference between us. It's like, where did you come from? Doesn't matter, right? What kind of awful things are in your history and your past? It's like, it doesn't matter. That's a really powerful point. And it's like, I know, like, when I, when I think of Greeks and Jews, I'm like, I love both of their food, right? You're like, that, that doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like there's this really big rift. But if you look into this, historically, if you dig in a little bit, you start to see that's a significant difference during this time in history, and like when you read about the Scythians, you're like, no way are they welcome in this place. And what Jesus says, what the Bible says, this is an incredible thing about digging deep is it challenges you. And this is the thing I love about digging into God's word is it challenges me in ways I would not have been challenged otherwise. And so here's uh, what I want to do is... I want you to not stress about not having all the right resources, okay? Like if you're like, how do I get these things? Go online, you can find them. We'll, we'll help you get access to anything you need to study the Bible deeply, but just commit to spending time. And so what I wanna do right now is I want to break up into some groups. Um, but before we do that, I have a story that I wanna share with you from Aline. Do you guys know Aline? She goes to our church, she's, she's fantastic. She's in the kids ministry and, and you know, sometimes you think, oh, okay, yeah, kids ministry, she's able to talk to children. It's like, oh no, this is a woman who has a deep and passionate love for digging into God's word. And so I know that about her and I want you guys to know, and I, I feel like Aline's story is so relatable. So I wanna share with you Aline's story as she was start, just digging into God's word for herself. When 
our church started doing inductive Bible studies, my relationship with this word completely changed. I was encouraged to buy three different, or to read three different translations of the Bible in my Bible study. So I ditched my NIV study Bible, and this was a Bible that I had had for decades. And I bought these two Bibles. I bought an NLT and an ESV. And something about getting in the Word and reading these different translations ignited something, a passion in me that I had never experienced before. I was able to look up cross-references in the ESV that helped me to have a deeper understanding. And the what happened from those study times also had something really interesting that happened. My intimate relationship with God grew. So I became daily expecting to meet with him. So I'll just share a little bit about, about these translations. And what I realized with the NIV Study Bible is that it gave me a great foundation. I learned to read the Bible and then look, okay, am I understanding what I'm reading? But it also became a crutch and I didn't know that until I got into these other Bibles. This one had a million cross references and I looked at every single one of them. And it started taking up a lot of time. So I had to rearrange my mornings to fit in this time that I needed to understand what I was reading in this ESV Bible. And that's the one thing I think I realized is that this deserves my time. It needs my time. The more I gave it my time, the more this became a delight rather than the discipline because it had always been a discipline for me, but it was not always a delight. Then I found this NLT Bible and this um, speaks my language. The ESV is really great. I know I need it because it's word for word. This is thought for thought and <laughs> I will read other translations and then read this one and just think, well, why didn't the others just say so? So what I realized is I need to give the Bible my time. It, it deserves my best and the translation matters because this actually speaks to my heart, helps my mind to open up. And I think the other thing that, that it really did for me is um, gave me courage to approach God in a whole new way because I was intimidated. I was intimidated, especially King James and, and even the ESV, they would intimidate me. So I think now having all of them together and it's a daily thing for me, um, has really helped me to confidently daily go to God and His Word and expect that He's going to meet me there.